Okay, we're going to look at some photos about people who live in weird situations and what we make of it. This is a bathroom outlet. Some people believe in those ground fall circuits. This doesn't have one. Uh, but let me tell you this about electricity. There's no limit, according to the NEC, there's no limit on the amount of receptacles you can put on a circuit. Now, there are restrictions on some of that, what I just said. If it's a bathroom circuit, you can only do so much in a bathroom circuit. If it's a kitchen circuit, if you're dealing with countertops, if you're dealing with a countertop circuit, the kitchen is required to have two 20 amp independent circuits handling the countertop receptacles. So those kinds of restrictions are in place. But generally speaking, if you've got a, a line of circuit, you can have as many receptacles in that line as you want. And the reasoning is this. They don't expect you to use every receptacle. They don't expect you to pull power out of every receptacle at the same time. Okay? So let's look at this picture again. We have a lot of stuff going on, and we know it's wrong, but is it really a hazard? Well, probably not, because they don't expect you to turn everything on at the same time, and it's the amperage that's going to do the, pro do the, do the uh, damage, not the electricity. Does that all make sense to everybody? So even though I would write this up and say this is terrible and you need to stop doing it and you know fix it, and, and if it's, there's no GFCI in there, you should put one in because it looks like it's right near to a sink. In reality, there's really no, there's no danger in this because unless they turn everything on at the same time and pull all that amperage out and causing a fire, nothing's going to happen, even though it's sloppy looking. Does it all make sense? Not hearing any protests, I will assume you all agree with me. This is an automotive radiator attached to the floor joist with hot water piped in. All the pipes on the wood burning boiler, boiler can be constructed to recycle components. Uh, that's the corrugated radiator right there. That's the radiator. That's the radiator pipe. And why they did this, I have no idea. Hey, Mike. Yeah. On that last slide, the breaker should trip anyway, right? Uh, the breaker will trip if you overload the, the amperage. And the only way you're going to be able to do that is to turn everything on at the same time or turn on enough things to exceed the amperage rating. Now, typically in a bathroom, we have a 15 amp circuit. Yes? A 15 amp circuit is going to, uh, what are these things going to pull? Uh, uh, we got a we got a uh, an air blower, which is pulling a lot of amperage. We have a uh, this looks like a uh, some kind of device for smelling up the air. What do you call those things? Uh, we get a bunch of stuff going on. I have no idea what they. If you don't exceed the amperage, the, the breaker won't trip. So you won't All start right. a fire. You'll just trip the breaker, right? <laughs> if you if you exceed the amperage, yes. All right, so radiator. Uh, here we have a, uh, you can always tell when you're looking at lead, right? So we have a corrugated hose, we have lead, we have a black pipe. Obviously it's an old house. This corrugated pipe is from a, uh, hose is from a 1945 Pontiac. I know that because the owner told me it was improper materials and if you're dealing with insurance a lot of insurance companies do not look favorably upon black pipe they want to see it gone so you have to consider that as an issue as well uh, we have an ac register here and we have an ac return and do you think they're interfering with each other Uh, I think it is. The yes. air is coming out of here, being blown back into here. Any kind of heating and cooling going on is going to be within this two-foot square right here. Gas vent, open window, AC, window AC. Not a good situation. The 
the homeowner said something about a roof drip. This is a real big. Down spot planter. It's getting plenty of water, so it's nice and healthy. CPVC touching a hot flue. We don't want that to uh, occur, so we put uh, we put a toothpaste uh, box between them to separate and cause that heat to dissipate. Yeah, like it's going to. Is that the right kind of light for a uh, shower? And should we have access to a switch, probably for this light, within reach while we're standing in the shower? Those are two questions that you should ask yourself when you're inspecting. Hey, Mike. Yeah. You mentioned uh, the insurance companies don't like the black pipe. Which black pipe were you talking about? The, uh, the galvanized stuff, the, the black stuff we saw in the picture. The old cast stuff? In the, yeah. the, vent, the vent assembly and stuff? Okay, on the left there. Okay. Let me see. Did I call it wrong? No, I think he just wanted to clarify which which pipe in that picture because there were so many. The stuff here? Yeah, the old cast iron. Yeah, they, they frown on cast iron too. And the reason is because it tends to rust out from the inside out over a 40, 50 year period. And they know that. So they're going to assume it's bad. And nobody's really using it. I haven't seen cast iron put in since the 1960s, 1970s. So you know it's old right from the start. Tin foil connecting the flue to the uh, I'm drawing a blank here, guys. What's this call down here? Tin so connector. The, yeah. Drafter. What? Drafter. 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 There we go. Thank you. I, I'm getting old in my old age. Uh, and also the uh, the TP valve right here. Is that okay for the TP valve to go uphill? The drain line? No. No, because there's water sitting in this pipe now, and that's going to deteriorate the, the rubber grommet that's on the bottom of that uh, valve causing it to corrode and eventually leak, and then water's going to start dripping out of there. That's not good. There, there's a limit, by the way, on the number of bends you can have. I think it's a uh, maximum of four or five. And we have one, two, three, four. Can't see where it goes from here, but if it goes out anywhere, that's five, and that's way too many. Obviously, professional plumber. Of course. And this is a professional uh, gutter guy. Absolutely. Catches it, doesn't it? This is the crawl space. And uh, after draining right into the crawl space, I forgot to hook it up. There's the drain line for it right there. You can see where it terminates right there. They didn't bring it over and hook it up. Who knows how long it's been doing this? Years, maybe. One way to plug it up, humidifiers. Why mess with that high-tech gadgetry when you could just put some cool whip, a cool whip bucket in there, fill it with water, and you have your humidity. I'm sure you've all seen this in your travels. An odyssey. This is crazy. We call these lolly, lolly columns. I don't know what you guys call them, but they're basically adjustable stanchions. And they're supporting this beam right here, probably in a crawl space. And using a, a weight and a wrench, not a proper way to address the issue. Duct tape will solve any problem, won't it? Not, not recommended to install hot water heaters on their side 
Also use a TPR valve, not a large pressure valve, pressure gauge, which is what this is. So this is wrong on all kinds of levels. And it's corroded, which means it's about due for replacement anyway. Chimney installation, it gets hot enough, it's gonna melt or catch the siding on fire, not to mention proper drafting because it's up against the wall where it can't draft. And if you have a downdraft, and this is an openable window right here, which I don't know if it is. Where's my arrow? There we go. Then it could downdraft right into the window. A clever way to use a drop strap, instead of letting it go to waste. Uh, excellent example of recycling, flex duct support in the crawl space. The requirement for flex ducking, this is a mobile, this is not a mobile home. Actually, this is a mobile home, I'm sorry. Uh, mobile home, uh, deck work and the mobile home underneath, the requirement has to be at least four inches off the ground, which this is, but that's not the proper support for it. Now, I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but they do make a, a uh, type of duct work that's covered in, I wanna say fiberglass sheathing, not the typical fiberglass we see, but this is heavy duty stuff. And that is allowed to be sitting on the ground because it's not something that rats can chew into, it's too thick. Uh, I've only seen a couple of uses for that. It's relatively expensive. So I don't run across it a lot, but you guys might. And uh, if you do, it can be sitting on the ground and that's okay. But anything else has to be elevated at least four inches off the ground. Uh, dryer wire, a three-prong wire. We have our hot on the left, our hot on the right, and the neutral in the middle. And of course, it's exposed. So just reading, waiting for something to go wrong. Tupper, tupper made wear, tupper cap, tupper made cap for a trash can. Hey, Mike. Yeah. Does that four inch rule for the ducting um, apply to ducting in a crawl space under a single family home? No, it doesn't. That has to be elevated off the ground substantially, not just four inches. But the reason for the four inches with mobile homes is because they tend to sit a lot lower to the ground to begin with. In crawl spaces, you should be attaching the ductwork, strapping it to the bottom of the floor joist, not letting it sit around or on the ground. <clears throat> 